Hey guys, this time I got something that a lot of you guys are familiar with, and I think most of you would consider these as bait fish. But hopefully, after watching this, you might think twice the next time you catch a blue runner. Damn. And I bet a lot of guys that fish in Florida have never tried eating blue runners before. But the truth is, they're really good for sushi. And lately, I've seen a few other people doing uh, some catch and cook videos, and they were quite surprised on how good they taste. They're usually not big enough to fillet, but the ones offshore are much bigger and more worthwhile to clean. Um, the one in the video was about a pound, which is a beast for this kind of fish. Look at the size of this blue runner. Holy cow. Holy shit. Jeez. Holy shit. So, as usual, I'm very careful when it comes to preparing the fish before I begin to fillet. Um, just take your time and try not to cut into the gut and it's best if you can remove the head with the innards still attached to it um, This way you won't contaminate your cutting board or the meat and you know overall you just have a cleaner surface area to work with And the way I cut around the head and the belly might seem unusual for a lot of people that's been filleting fish for a while But for sushi purposes, this is meant to ensure that I avoid cutting the stomach or the gallbladder um, which is really important because that can make the fish taste slightly bitter uh, if I cut that. So I've had a few people comment on why scaling fish is a waste of time. For the most part, I would agree, especially when the fillet is going to be washed off and cooked later. But if you're going to use it for sushi, it's important to keep the fillet dry. And the only way to do this is to avoid getting scales on the meat. Um, that way you don't have to wash it off later. For demo, this fish wasn't scaled and you can tell that as the blade runs down the back, tiny pieces of scales are rubbing off and some are getting worked into the flesh and some might get embedded into the meat. So if you really want quality sushi, it's best to scale the fish first. And overall, you'll have a cleaner area to work with and there won't be tiny pieces of scales everywhere, like on your hands or a knife or a cutting board or on the hand towel. I mean, to me, it's just easier to work with. And by the way, blue runners have a layer of armored skin towards the tail. And this is nearly impossible to cut off, um, especially if it's, you're using a larger fish. So just cut off the fillet about an inch away from the very end. The ribs on these fish are very easy to remove, so you won't have a problem doing this. And here I'm flaying off a piece of the belly side first because I'll be tearing off the skin later. And uh, by cutting this off first, um, it won't tear off along with the skin. And the next thing I'm going to do is to remove the skin with the tweezer. Um, you can also use a plier too, but just keep in mind the important thing is that make sure that you hold down the fillet with one hand and pull on the other. Uh, you might have to work the edge first, but it should come off in one piece. And the reason why I'm taking the skin off is because for this kind of fish, uh, the skin is kind of it's very chewy and it's tasteless, so it's not really edible. And one technique to remove any leftover scales is to gently brush it off with the edge of your blade. 
Um, this way you won't have to wash it off in water. And just like most other fish, you can cut out the center pin bones or use a tweezer instead. For the way I make the sashimi and nigiri, it won't make any difference if I split it in half like this. For the top loin, I'm going to slice it into wider and thinner pieces for the nigiri. And for the bottom loin, this is going to be cut for bite-sized sashimi pieces instead. So here's a neat trick. If you want to eat your sashimi with grated ginger or onion, for example, uh, by screwing the loin, later on it'll be easier for the fish to grab onto whatever garnishes you're using. Also, if you are dipping them into ponsu sauce with, with grated ginger, for example, uh, it'll help pick up more of the sauce too. It's a neat trick, try it out. And if you want to be extra fancy, you can try cutting super thin slices and stack it on top of each other and then roll it into your pretty rolls. Because maybe your tender dates will be into this, but you know, I don't know. So at the end, you're going to have some leftover trims that you can cut into smaller pieces and make a sushi roll out of it. Um, but for me, this time I'm going to mince it up and mix it with a kimchi base and some green onions and then make it into a gangan sushi, which is just a small piece of rice ball with nori around it. Um, you'll get to see this at the end. The kimchi base is mostly just chili, vinegar, salt, and garlic. And personally, I really like the slight spiciness and sourness that it brings. It goes really well with many other white fish too, and not just blue, f blue runners. You know, I hope there is a market for this fish someday because it definitely deserves a spot in a sushi case. Actually, in a lot of upper end sushi bars in the northeast and on the west coast, they serve a very similar fish that's called an aji, which is Japanese horse mackerel and they are typically much smaller than blue runners. The difference between the two is that Aji has a lighter and softer flesh, but personally I prefer blue runners because it has a better te texture and has a bolder taste. And I bet many sushi chefs would love to use this fish if they were exposed to it. And I'm pretty sure if you were to have a professional chef serve you this platter in a fancy New York City restaurant, it wouldn't surprise me if it costs close to 100 bucks. So save yourself some money and go catch one. Alright guys, thanks for watching another video. I hope you try blue runners yourself. Uh, they're not too bad cooked either, but I prefer it raw. And by the way, I recently just finished my website, so please check it out. The link is in the description below. Um, the blog post on the site is where I discuss more in depth about the fish that I'm using and other cool information that's not in the video. So please check it out.